Can I ask you first about the legality of this? Now, I know that um, the belief in gender-critical views is a protected belief in law. Are Nottingham City Council on dodgy legal ground here? It seems that they absolutely are. I stress I'm not a specialist discrimination lawyer, but I've certainly been keeping a close eye on what's been going on. And in 2021, if you threw a stick, you would hit some sort of court case, um, investigative journalism or an independent review that set out exactly what was happening to people whose views did not accord with those of Stonewall and they were being unlawfully discriminated against. And that's what's really surprising. So remember, in April 2021, Blackpool Council were found to be acting as the antithesis of a public body in a democracy when they banned bus adverts for a festival because one of the speakers said um, Satan was behind same-sex marriage. That was followed quite quickly by the Rheindorf report in May. So professors Friedman and Phoenix were found to have their fundamental human rights breached by Essex University. Um, who didn't let them speak. And then in June, not only were Edinburgh City Council fined £25,000 for banning another Christian preacher who said homosexuality was akin to incest, but we also had the decision of the EAT in Maya Forstarter's case. So her belief in the immutability of sex was worthy of respect in a democratic society and it was protected by the Equality Act. And then, of course, we had the Stephen Nolan investigates and we had the Harry Miller case. It just is not possible for these councillors in Nottingham to be ignorant of all of this. It, it seems abundantly clear that the belief that sex is real and immutable is one that's protected by the Equality Act. Julie Bindle's right to talk about women as a category and violence towards women is an expression of her Article 10 rights. The fact she wants to do it in a library and people come and watch her, they've also had their Article 11 rights, freedom of association breached. It, it just seems astonishing that Nottingham can be ignorant. So then we're left with, they know exactly what they're doing. And I do wonder, because that statement of theirs was so short, and yet at the end made it very clear that what they were doing, they were doing um, because of their fealty to Stonewall. Well, it's also so I really, really... It's also Jeez. potentially libelous, isn't it? I mean, they're, they're, they're implying that uh, Judy Bindle has uh, s some kind of uh, hate for trans people, is a, is a transphobe, uh, which isn't true. Well, first of all, we're not sure quite what they mean, because it does seem that they got the wrong Julie, didn't it? And, and they thought that Julie Birchall was turning up. And I'm sure Julie Birchall will be the first to admit that she's gone into some hot water with very antagonistic comments. She's been in trouble with the law. Julie Bindle, as far as I know, never has been. As you say, she's been campaigning for women's rights. Um, um, she's been worried about violence and prostitution all her campaigning life. I'm not aware of anything that she said is hateful. So they, they will have to justify that. If they've got any hope at all of dodging a legal action, they will have to show that what they did was lawful. And although I stress I'm not a specialist discrimination lawyer, I can't see how they are going to do that. This would, seems to me, uh, and many others who've commented, to be an absolute flagrant admission that they are going to break the law because they are on the right side of history and Stonewall is telling them to do this. I mean, I think it's astonishing, that point you mentioned, um, when, when Judy Bindle uh, gave the talk in the street and there were activists there, the activists that had persuaded the library to, to ditch the event, and... Uh, two of them apparently were overheard saying to Julie Bindle, we're here to protest you, Julie Birchill. They, you know, they, they didn't know which Julie it was. So what, what you know, th 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 if they don't even know who they're protesting against, can we really take these, these people seriously? And should Nottingham Council and figures in authority generally be taking these kinds of people seriously? No, absolutely not. They're risible. But worse than that, if they are deliberately flouting the law, then they're very dangerous. Even if that was Julie Birchill, She'd still have a right to come to Nottingham, hold an event and speak. And I'm sure, Andrew, as a gay man, you're not going to be thrilled at all that somebody is saying Satan is behind same-sex marriage. I'm not a fan of that either. But if somebody wants to have a conference and like-minded people want to gather around and have a chat, they are allowed to do that. Their rights are protected by the law for obvious reasons. Because if we allow one minority group to decide who can speak, well, there's going to come a day quite soon when you are not on the right side of their history and they will shut you up. That's why everybody has that right. As long as you're not inciting violence, which I don't think Judy Pindle has ever done or ever would, 
she has a right to speak. So I think it's absolutely crucial that Nottingham are very clear on Monday, we understand the law and we're going to break it. Or, well, oops, we got horribly wrong and we're going to say sorry. Well, in addition to that, you know, if there, if there is a speaker uh, saying that all gay people have come from Satan and will go to hell, um, I find it very patronising that some authority figures would step in and try and prevent me from hearing that because they're worried that I might be offended. I, 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 I'm more offended by that. I can deal with harsh words. You know, um, well, a lot of people can't, and I do feel for them. But that's why there's a big difference between somebody coming to your house and screaming at your bedroom window, "Satan's in the room with you." I mean, th that's all sort of criminal offences, and you'd want to be protected from that. I mean, some people do seem to find the mere thought that other people are saying things they don't like really yeah. hurts them. But as I've always said, that I'm afraid is their problem. I don't wish to sound as though I'm lacking in compassion, but I probably am. If that is how you are affected by other people's views that you don't have to listen to, if they're not shouting outside your house, then block them, mute them, don't go to the event. If you're really that fragile, then that is a problem for you to deal with. Can I you, ask you, you cannot specifically about... I, I mean, I, I completely agree with what you're saying there. Judy Bindle isn't going to someone's house, standing on their doorstep. You know, there are laws against harassment, that kind of thing. She's doing an event which was sold out. People wanted to go and see her voluntarily. And this is now depriving them of that right to attend that event. But can I ask you about Stonewall? Because um, this statement issued from Nottingham City Council specifically said that Judy Bindle's appearance and her views would be in violation of their equality, diversity and inclusion strategy, which is all online. I read it. And on page 17 of that strategy, it mentions that they are Stonewall diversity champions and they're very happy about that and that to me is the only part which would make sense of any of this because there's no there's nothing in that document to suggest that Judy Bindle's views would be in violation of it so it must be to do with the influence of Stonewall. There can't be any other reason and that's why it's so frightening because the Rheindorf report I mean surely they must have been aware of that and, and that was a very clear finding that Essex University had breached the fundamental rights of two academics. They're really lucky they didn't get sued. I think that's because they backtracked and they apologised. Well, then they apologised for apologising. But of course, now Joe Phoenix is suing the Open University. It, it's organisation after organisation being led into reputational and financial ruin by this protection lobby of a campaigning group, which has managed to worm its way into almost every single state institution. And so my faith in lawfare does begin to waver. I think I commented on Twitter today. I thought after Forstarter and Miller that everyone would wake up because nobody wants to spend money or be humiliated in court. But I really do now think the grip that Stonewall has is so tight well, it is a religious fervour. I know that's not a particularly unique comment to make, but I think it bears repeating. People are in the grip of a religious fervour, which means they are impervious to sense, reason and the law because they know they are right. They're on the right side of history, etc. For Nottingham to do what they've done, I mean, on one level, it's absolutely hilarious to see this flagrant breach of the law, to see the actual one of the authors of the document pop up and said, yes, I wrote that. And it's almost like handing yourself over to Julie Bindle's legal team on a plate. But it's not funny, is it? Because these are public officials with control over public money who are supposed to be an important part of our democracy, voted for by the local people. When they do get sued, well, and when I hope they get sued, who's going to end up paying for it? Nottingham, the, the residents of Nottingham, of course. This is all public money. The individual councillors, sadly, won't be individually liable. Although I, I, I do think, you know, either they, they undertake some pretty swift retraining or they admit that they're not fit for public office and they step down. You well, cannot sorry. post that flouting the law publicly and, and remain in office.